Hello and welcome, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to properly clean your CPU ready for some fresh thermal paste to uh, provide maximum cooling to your system. Now before we get started on doing this, you need to make sure you've got a few things. First of all, most importantly, make sure you've got some thermal compound. I'm using the Artec MX4 thermal compound, it's, uh, it's pretty good, it's not too expensive either, I believe it cost me like one ninety nine. so it's good. It's not, it, it won't break the bank. Um, next, make sure you've got yourself some kitchen roll or uh, some paper towels. I wouldn't recommend using a toilet roll because it does leave a bit of a, it leaves a lot of material all over the place from the kitchen roll. Uh, toilet roll, sorry. Uh, so try and use some of that. You're going to be using that just to just to rub away the the debris from the thermal module and the CPU before we start using the lint-free cloth and the alcohol. Now. Um, Next thing you're going to need is a lint-free cloth. Uh, you can always get a coffee filter as well. That's always not, that's always not as bad either. And uh, yeah, that's what you're going to use to apply the alcohol to. And speaking of alcohol, I've got some esophical alcohol here, which is what I recommend you use for this. Uh, mine's 99.9%. .9%. You can get any. You can get some as minimum as 70%. And I've got this from Amazon. I don't believe you can buy this over the counter in the UK. Um, like I said, I've been, I did look around for it and I couldn't find it, so that's why I went online and bought it. I believe everywhere else you can buy it over the counter. And so I would re highly recommend using that stuff. Don't go using uh, like vodka or any sort of alcohol like that, okay? Because it's got a lot of substance. It's got other substances, it, substances in it which will not have a, a, a very good, a positive effect when the heat starts to come through on the CPU into the thermal module. So you may not notice it straight away, but after time you probably will do. So if I was you, start using uh, a tropical alcohol. It's the best stuff for this. Now, it's all good and known all that, but why would you want to clean it this way, okay? Why can't we just get, say, just get a bit of kitchen roll, give it a good clean up like that, apply some paste on it, heat sink on, job done. Now, there is a reason for that, it's because it won't clean it as good. Um, it won't, uh, you won't allow the fur module to be as efficient to carry the heat away from the CPU, so, um, and a good example of this is that I very much did this because I didn't have access to any alcohol at the time. I'm running a Corsair H80 GTR cooler, uh, liquid cooler and I didn't have any of the alcohol so I just wiped off all the thermal paste as much as I could applied some fresh paste, this paste actually to be exact and in my ambient temperature in the house it was around 16 to 18 degrees and it was idling at around 36 to 38 degrees so that is quite high considering it's idling and the house isn't very warm so I've managed to uh, acquire some alcohol, cleaned it properly, and now my idleness feed has dropped down to anywhere between 28 and 30 degrees. So that it does it does make a bit of a difference. And if you start thinking about it, if you then start overclocking your CPU, getting maximum load, then say for example mine now, I've overclocked mine to 4.5 gigs and it's at 65 degrees hanging around that area. If I hadn't cleaned it properly, it'd probably be around 70, 72 maybe. And that like I say, and that could be a difference if you're really pushing your CPU to the point where say you've got, you're getting it under 80 degrees say for example the Haswell um, Enthusiast course where um, if they're not, as long as they're not over 80 degrees then you're not going to cause any risk but what if you're trying to push to that this degree deficit could make a huge difference so that's why you want to try and do it as, as best you can. So now let's go and have a look and see the different methods that you can use to apply uh, to apply your foam paste to your CPU. Okay, so in this example, we're going to use um, an AMD CPU uh, with a stock cooler. Okay, uh, so let's just crack on now. Let's just get on with removing it. So I'm just going to remove the catch here. This should, this should get rid of the uh, release the catch so I can get the heat sink off. Now, I haven't actually done this one for a while, so I know it's going to be quite stuck on. So if it is stuck on, it's really solid. Don't just pull it off. All right, just give it a little twist off, and it should then remove off. I think that's worked. Wow, I can see that's actually really odd. I don't even think of. There's pretty much no thermal paste left on it, is there? Look at that. Mind you, that didn't even that wasn't even tough to come off. There's actually no paste on that. Christ. So this is actually my brother's old motherboard. I'm surprised he's not complaining to me about overheating or anything. Oh well, anyway, that's a good. <laughs> that's a pretty. That's a good example actually of what happens if you don't replace your thermal paste as often as you should do. That is pretty bad. My God. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get start wiping it down. So I'm just going to slightly move this motherboard out of the way. So I'm going to put it onto the desk instead of off straight onto the board. Just get some of the debris off it. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to use the alcohol rub in a moment to uh, uh, to clean it, give it a good spring clean. Good job is this isn't actually a... Uh, this is my brother's really old motherboard, so I'm not going to have to worry too much about keeping it super clean. But do be careful with yours, guys, okay? Okay, so let's get that off, just get the debris off it. Get it off. There we go, let's shake it off and get rid of it. Just move it out of the way. 
if you don't need it on. Okay, now you see now it's a bit, it's a lot cleaner now. You can actually see the heat, you can actually see the heat, uh, the heat spreader on it, which is quite good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, apply the alcohol. And now when you grab this alcohol, okay, you don't uh, don't sit there doing it over over your motherboard like that. Because if you drop it and spill it all over your motherboard and your CPU and stuff, you're just going to damage it. Okay, so do it away from your away from your motherboard and CPU. So I can get mine open. There we go. And just basically, but I won't do it here because this motherboard doesn't matter if I damage it. I'll do it here and just show you quickly if you're not too sure. Just put it over the top and then just give it a little tip like that. Sorry, I'm not the camera now. Okay, so you got basically a little damp patch, okay, which is what you're going to use to clean off any excess debris to give it a good spring clean. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and do that now on here. Just give it a good wipe. Doesn't really matter what motion you go in, but I just like to use circle motions. Okay, it'd be a nice strong smell. Sorry, I knocked the camera again, didn't I? I'll try not to do that. And there you go. Nice and buff, nice and clean. Look at that, it's really shiny. It's looking good. Okay, don't go touching it as well now because you don't want to leave any uh, oily residue or anything from your fingers or, or any debris. Okay, so that's got a, quite a lot of dirt there, as you can see. So I'm just going to flip that over and, uh, and get a bit more alcohol. Again, don't do this over the motherboard. I'm just doing it for the purposes of this example so you can see how I'm doing it. And then we do the same, do the exact same thing on the CPU. But just be careful with your cloth or your filter so you're not dragging it all over the motherboard and uh, potentially causing any damage on that. So just give it a good wipe, good clean off. Yeah, can I can actually see what it is now. Ah, it's an, it's an Athlon. Christ, the time, the time of making this video. I remember when I had that one, when I had that and I was playing on, what game is it? I think it was actually Unreal Tournament. Wow, that's really old. The very first Unreal Tournament. Does anyone remember that? Good game. Okay, there we go now. Nice and clean. Actually, you can actually, um, so you probably won't be able to see it clean. You may be able to see the moisture actually drying off now. You've got to wait for that to dry before you put it on. Uh, there are various methods that you can use to apply thermal paste. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is the P method. Now, basically, what you do is you just need it in the middle of the CPU and just a very small amount, just basically a P amount, just a bit more than that. There we go. And just rise it up slowly, just to don't drip it around it, don't drip it all over the place. There you go. And that is one of the effects that you want. A nice P method, okay, and that there would give a, a nice even spread because um, the, your actual, sorry, not the camera again, the actual core of the CPU or the diodes are actually around the center here, okay? So that's basically where you really only need to cover. So if I just uh, apply this back on, and you'll see the spread. Get that on, there we go. I'll just push down on there, and I'll lift it off. Oh, it's a bit of suction, so you can see the spread there. It's basically, basically covered all, all, all the diodes in there to get uh, to basically get some uh, get good cooling, okay. And now the next method is a line method, okay. Now basically, what you need to do is try and do a really, really thin line, um, basically across across the center like so, or or across that way, whichever way. It's not going to matter too much, okay. And this will get a lot more coverage, but you've got to do a very, very thin line, which is why I don't really tend to do this one. But then again. I might have just done an amazingly good line there. That's pretty good, actually. That's not bad at all, that. Quite impressed with that one. Okay, and again, just apply the heat sink. And I'm going to show you the spread on this one as well. It's quite a, not a bad spread at all. Just push that down. There we go. I'm trying to take it off now. Come on. Off you get. <laughs> there you go. So you can see it's a lot more better spread. So if you prefer to do the line method, by all means do so, okay? Um, personally, I'm not really too... Uh, I'm not really too picky on either one of them. Um, I haven't really done much of the line one, so I can never get a decent line. It, it always ends up putting too much on. But I think now from that line, I'm going to try and go off and do another line if I can. And they are they are two methods that you can use. There is another method you can use called the cross method. Um, I think that probably uses a little bit too much thermal paste, but I'll show you that as well. Okay, so the cross method is basically just it is basically what it is. It's just across across the CPU. I can't see. I, I don't know many people that have actually done this, but I have heard of this method. Um, Again, I'm not really particularly too, too, um, one for it. I don't, I don't prefer this one at all. I prefer either the P method or the line method. But now that I did that awesome line on that, um, now that I did, did a really good line on that demonstration, I'm probably going to go off and do a line now. 
Okay, and that's the cross method you can use. Um, again, I've, I've not heard many people use this, but I have heard of this method, unless it's just a, a hoax. But here you go, I'll just do the spread now so you can see it. It will cover a lot more, but you do have to be careful with this amount because you can end up putting too much on and it could end up spilling over the sides. So you can see it does cover a lot more. But again, just be very careful when you do that one so you don't get too much of it all spilling over the side, especially if you're using um, Arctic, silver pa uh, Arctic silver paste because it's got a lot of silver particles in it which do love to conduct uh, over the motherboard and you really don't want that happening, believe me. Okay, so in the end here, I'm just going to go and apply the line method. Let's see if I can get another line that's perfect as that previous one. I think it's already a bit too thick, actually. Well, that's not too bad, actually. It's not really, not very central, is it? But still, it will do, and it will do for this demonstration. Do try and get it as central as central as possible, okay? All right, let's just reapply this back on now. And put the bracket on. And don't forget to do the locking nut. Overlocking bracket rather, sorry. Okay, and then uh, don't forget to plug your fan back in. Okay, otherwise it'd be a bit pointless. That is how you clean your CPU off and repaste and repaste your uh, CPU as well. Okay, so that's how you properly clean your CPU, ready for some fresh thermal paste and to give yourself a, a, a good chance of maximum cooling for your system. Okay, so I hope, I hope you've learned something from that. Um, you can use, like I say, you can use any 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 three of those methods. I'm not a favour of any of them. Well, I am. Well, I say not a favour, but I'm not saying that one's better than the other. I haven't actually used all three methods and tested uh, the heat the heat differences between them. But I'm pretty sure they'll all do a very very good job, providing the CPU and firmware module has been cleaned has been cleaned properly. So um, myself personally, I did used to use the P method a lot, um, but from that uh, from previously those if you see that amazing line I did, not the one that was slightly off centre, but the first one. Now I thought that was pretty good, so I might try and do another line method now and have a go at it. Um, I, I don't know many people who do do the cross method. I have heard of it, but um, like I said, I've not heard of anyone who actually does do it. So, I mean, if you do do it, do post below, please, and let me know if it has made a, t a difference in your temperature changes, okay, for your CPU. Okay, other than that, guys, that's it, really. So, like or dislike this video, leave a comment below if you have any problems, questions, or queries. And, of course, do please subscribe so I can try and grow this channel as quick as possible and get some more videos out to you. All right, thanks, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again.